It is 1911 time. On Sunday, gun day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. And today we are taking a look at a fairly high-end 1911 and then also comparing it to something a little bit cheaper. For the most part, when it comes to guns like this, you really get what you pay for. So I am most excited to take a look at this more expensive one first and that happens to be the Specialist from Dan Wesson. The Specialist came to life when police departments approached Dan Wesson to build them a more reliable, durable 1911 to replace the ones that they had been carrying. The additions to the gun that made it ideal for law enforcement also made it a nice option for home defense, which is why they now offer it for sale to the public. The Specialist is a full-size 1911 chambered in either 45 or 9mm. The forged stainless steel slide features Clark-style serrations and night sights with a single amber tritium dot in the rear and a green and white front post. The frame comes standard with a Picatinny rail which is important especially for police and home defense. There's also some nice texturing in the front, an undercut trigger guard, and recessed slide stop to enable the installation of laser grips if you so choose. In this case, the gun is equipped with some very aggressive G10 VZ Operator 2 grips. The Specialist also comes with an ambidextrous thumb safety, an extended mag release, and a detachable two-piece magwell. This gun ships with two 10-round magazines with bump pads for the 9mm version, and it's available in either a matte stainless finish or the duty black finish, which makes light work of typical everyday wear and tear. Now there is definitely a lot of nice features on this gun and chances are if you are a fan of the 1911 you know the name Dan Wesson. So let's see if this thing can live up to its $1700 price tag. Alright guys, back for the first mag impression of the Dan Wesson Specialist. The first thing that comes to mind when I put my hands on this gun is how aggressive these VZ grips are. With the crazy looking design of the G10 on here, it is sort of hard to see how aggressive they actually are. There are grooves towards the back of the grip, but then across the front where your fingers lay, it is a very like scallop type of texture. Because of the way you grip a gun, the front and the rear are obviously going to be where you feel the most hot spots. So although this is aggressive and kind of feels uncomfortable, I don't think this would be uncomfortable to shoot for a long time. It's right on that edge of being a little bit too aggressive for my taste, but at the same time, if my hands are wet or sweaty, I definitely don't think that this thing is going to be jumping out of my hand. Another reason why I don't think it would be jumping out of my hand is because this thing shot so smooth with that first mag. Starting with the grip angle, I'm definitely a fan of a 1911 style grip. Grip angles like this definitely point very naturally for me and part of that reason is why I shoot other guns with similar grip angles very well. Just from handling this gun and racking the slide, you can tell that the tolerances in here are much better than you'll find in a lower end gun, which we will get to in a second. And just with my hands on this gun and that first mag, I can definitely tell where that higher end price tag comes from. Granted, it's not super high, it's definitely not near the top end that 1911s do get to, but for the most part it is definitely more and higher quality than an entry level 1911. With the undercut trigger guard and higher beaver tail, I can definitely get a nice high purchase on there. It's obviously not going to be as low of a bore axis as some other options out there, but for a 1911 it definitely helped me mitigate recoil and like I said, this thing shot very smooth. I also really like the matte stainless finish that they put over the entire gun. Not only does it give it a nicer, classier look than just plain old black, but it actually feels really nice too. It feels like it's almost like bead blasted or stonewashed. It's a nice satiny type of smooth finish. And because that finish is not super slick, I can actually get a grip on here to do press checks if I wanted to. There is a lot of real estate here where they could have put front serrations, which would be nice. But at the same time for a purist, if you're going for just a standard 1911, you really can't beat this. The rear serrations are nice and functional. Maybe if my hands were wet, I could use those serrations to be just a little bit more aggressive, but they're still very functional and I think it just fits with the overall look and feel of the gun. As for the controls, the safety is ambidextrous. That is neither a pro or a con in my book. I've said this before and I'll say it again, that would be a con if it got in the way of my trigger finger. But in this case on the Specialist, it stays high and out of the way, whether it is on safe or not. 
The magazine release also feels very nice. It may be a little bit on the stiffer side, but I still have no problem stripping those mags from the gun. That button also has some nice knurling on it to match both the front and the rear of the grip. One thing that I did take notice of is that these are the standard mags that it ships with. As you can see, they have the little bump pads on the bottom there, and this is a 10 round magazine. If you use a magazine without that bump pad, then you might run into a little bit of an issue. That issue would come from the mag well, and this is also being very picky. When using a magazine with the bump pad on the bottom there, I can definitely slam it home and know that that mag is seated. However, if you're using a magazine without a bump pad like this, because the magwell is flared like this, if I go to slam a mag in, you can see I need to actually push my thumb or my finger in past that magwell to make sure it is seated. Now if you slam it really hard, your hand just kind of takes up a lot of that space inside of the magwell. I don't think that would ever really be a big issue, but for the most part, if I were shooting this gun, I would probably opt for the ones with the little base plates on them. This magwell is supposedly removable, like I mentioned, but this is not my gun, so I'm not going to try to figure out how to take that off of there. If I did own this gun, I would actually leave that magwell on there because it makes seating those mags just a little bit easier, as long as you're using these. And then there's the sights on top. It looks like they are using some type of Trijicon sights. They are night sights, they are decently bright, and typically I'm not a fan of single dots that you stack on top of each other. I don't shoot sights like this very often, but these were actually very easy to get used to. Both the front and rear are very easy to pick up, and then you just kind of line up the dots, and then you're good to go. With just that first mag, I was very accurate with these sights and the gun itself, but then things sort of took a turn for the worse, so let's get into the rest of the clips and then I will come back for my final impression. I just had one light primer strike. Hit that thing pretty hard too. We're gonna rock some distance now, back at about 40 yards. If I had to guess, this thing will probably tackle this with ease. Maybe if I could hit the target. gun is accurate, I'm just not, I'm just rushing things today. Let's go back a little bit further. Of course, as I step back just over 50 yards, it's starting to get windy. I'm actually gonna take my time and see if I can land shots properly now. All right, let's give this a shot. Hitting low, aren't I? That was way left. This ammo, it must be the ammo. That was definitely not me. All right, this ammo is definitely not doing it justice at first. I thought it was me, but. So that little guy, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> no. no. And it's also me too. I gotta put some of the misblame on me. Let's get back in closer and see if we can do some work on the dueling tree.
before we get to the cheaper option, we still gotta have at least one mag dump. Straight like an arrow. All right, back for my final thoughts on the specialist until we move on to one of the cheaper options. Typically, I would not blame accuracy issues on ammo, but as you saw there, I was definitely having some problems with the ammo that I was running. It was some 115 grain white box Winchester, and as you know, that stuff can sort of be hit or miss. When I was shooting one-handed there, I had a massive flinch as the gun did not go off. I checked that casing and it was hit very hard. There was definitely a solid strike in the center of the primer, but for some reason it just did not go off. I continued testing with that ammo and up close it seemed to be okay until I got back to those further distances there. At that furthest distance out, I was really focused on my sight alignment and having a very smooth, slow trigger pull. And one of those shots went completely off target and it definitely was not me. I will definitely own up to not shooting a gun well and putting that blame on myself like last week's episode, but for this one, that is definitely the ammo and I feel bad about it because it is just not doing this gun justice. Unfortunately, I don't have any more time with this gun to actually go out and test it again, so I'm going to give you my final impressions as best as I can without actually talking about that bad ammo anymore. But for future testing of guns on this channel, I will definitely make sure I sort of step up that ammo game because I continue to run some of that ammo and other guns that I brought up that day and I had light primer strikes like crazy. So besides all of the wonky shots from that ammo, this thing still shot very nice. Let me grab a snap cap so I can show you the trigger. Now here is a look at this trigger pull. As you can imagine, it is a very nice trigger. There's virtually no play in the trigger shoe itself. On some cheaper 1911s, you will see a lot of up and down play with the triggers and this one feels very solid. So as long as I have that grip safety held in, I'll put the pad of my finger on there. There's a little bit of take up back to that wall and then a nice, relatively light break. Now is this the best 1911 trigger that I've ever shot? No, because I've shot some very, very high ends in the past. But for the price point that these come in at, that is definitely a trigger that I can live with. We'll check out the reset while still having that snap cap in there. I'll let out slowly. Ooh, it is super early. So that was a reset right there. You can definitely feel it and hear it. And then I am sitting right on top of the wall again for another break. Even after the first mag through this gun, just the way that it feels in my hand and the recoil impulse, all of that coupled with the trigger made me want to shoot this thing very fast. So overall, it is definitely a very nice package and I think the price of $1,700 MSRP is definitely justified. But now we should also take a look at something a little bit on the cheaper end, like this Colt government model. Now on deck is a Colt government model competition series. This thing is coming in drastically cheaper than the other. It does have some very similar features, so let's see how it shoots. And one more. All right. All right, now for some thoughts on the Colt Government Model Competition Series. Like I said, this gun is coming in at around the $850 mark MSRP, and it does offer a lot of the same features as the Dan Wesson. If we're talking about purely aesthetics, I think the Specialist is a way better looking gun than the Colt, but that is of course all personal preference. I'm sure if you like black guns with blue grips, just like this, this one would be more up your alley. Now this one definitely feels good in my hand, but the beaver tail does not get you quite as high as you can get on the Specialist. So because of that and just the overall lower tolerances, this thing did not shoot quite as smooth as the Dan Wesson. The sights on this thing are a little bit ridiculous. The rear sight is just blacked out, but this front post is a huge piece of fiber optic. It doesn't really work well showing this on video, but that front sight post is a huge orange dot. 
You can sort of see how the fiber optic kind of mushrooms out the front there. That's something that could be fixed, but again, this is not my gun, so I'm not gonna touch it. I think you could clean that up a little bit and make the front sight picture a little bit more crisp, but at the same time, it's definitely easy to pick up and that thing picked up a lot of light while I was out there on the range. The controls on this are also fairly similar. The only thing is that the safety is not ambidextrous. Also, this mag button is a little bit tough for my liking. I'm not sure if it is sticky or needs to be broken in but I definitely prefer the one on the higher end 1911. And then of course there is the trigger. Just how I was mentioning the different trigger tolerances before, as you can see, there's definitely a lot of up and down play with this trigger. You can hear it. Now this definitely isn't the worst case of this that I've ever seen. There are way worse triggers out there, but of course if I'm putting this up against something that costs almost twice as much, I'm going to opt for the more expensive option. There is a snap cap in here and it is ready to go, so I will press down on the beaver tail safety, finger on the trigger, back to the wall, and then decent break. This one is definitely not quite as light as the Dan Wesson, but at the same time, you're paying a lot less. Now we will check out this reset. Slowly let the trigger out. This one is a little bit more manageable. I feel like the Dan Wesson really snapped my finger off of the trigger there on the reset. It's a little bit more audible and more tactile, but I do like how it is a little more subdued. And then of course I'm sitting right on top of the wall again for another break. So I feel like this is a very good comparison because the guns are so similar, but obviously you get what you pay for. If I was presented with the option to buy either of these guns, I would definitely opt for the Specialist. The overall fit and finish and tolerances that Dan Wesson works with is definitely a lot tighter and more high quality than Colt. Granted, this is a lower end Colt though too. They definitely make very, very high quality and nice firearms. So if you don't quite have the budget to go with something like the Specialist, then yes, I think this would also be a good option. There are so many different options out there where you can really compare all sorts of 1911s. And this is one platform of firearm where it really definitely comes down to how much you are willing to spend. If you're a big fan of the 1911 and you do not own one yet, I would suggest waiting out on buying something like this saving up a little bit more until you can get something a little bit more high quality like the Specialist. But hey, that is all just my opinion, me letting you guys know what I think about these personally, so let me know what you would do between these two guns in the comments down below. I have to give a big shout out to my friend who does not want to be named, but he supports the channel over on Patreon, and he loaned me both of these guns for the video, so I really appreciate that, supporting the channel and allowing me to make this content that a lot of you guys wanna see. Also, another big shout out to Panda Tactical for sponsoring this Sunday Gun Day and pretty much every Sunday Gun Day for the next year to come. If you guys don't follow them on Instagram, please check them out, the link is in the description down below. A lot of this content would not be possible without their support. And then if you guys have any questions on the Dan Wesson Specialist or the Colt Government Model Competition Series, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to answer as many as possible, but these guns are going back to their owner tomorrow, so chances are I won't be able to have any more hands-on with them as of right now. And that brings us to this. If you are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week, and that's going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.